Hey guys, Enemy here with a distrim tutorial. So as you may know, I've recently released a plugin which uh, will help you reduce your After Effects um, distortion, warp, whatever you want to call it. And this is the official tutorial for it. In this tutorial, I will be showing you how to fix a few things if they're not working, how to um, be able to use the plugin. I will show you completely everything about which is kind of like about using it. And I will also sh um, tell you something else in the beginning. So first of all, I would like to thank everybody that commented under the official promo. Um, I've got a lot, a lot, and a lot of positive feedback, as you can see, 133 likes, and um, well, it's actually just 50 comments. Google is messing up sometimes. But yeah, thanks a lot to everybody that commented. Um, I really appreciate it a lot, especially the one, the, the, the ones that I don't even know and that it still are still thankful for it, still thanking me. I've gotten over, I think, 50 subs in the past few days, so thank you very much to everybody that supported me, that uh, subscribed to me. I will not let you down. I will be putting out more content like this soon. But there's one thing I would like to say, which is not so good, is that um, if you take a closer look, it's 100, 133 likes. Um, I mentioned in the uh, description that I would like everybody to like and comment on it if possible. I've gotten 55 likes so far on 133 comments. Now let's just head over to Mediafire to show you how many times it has been downloaded. It's been downloaded over 170 times. This ratio here refreshes every six hours, so it's probably been downloaded by 180 people so far. Now if you compare this, there's 50 people who didn't even give a fucking crap about it, who didn't comment nor like it. And um, there's basically been 120 people who didn't feel the need to even say thank you in the comments which I kind of think is really sad, um, but it's it's gotten better. The last thing I gave away for free was a very, very small editing pack. It's gotten 21 likes, 16 comments. Now check this, 130 downloads. Are you fucking me? Like seriously. I'm giving something up for free and you guys, like some of you guys, I'm not saying that everybody doesn't. I'm really, I really appreciate the ones that are actually commenting on it and are grateful for it. But the ones that are not commenting on it, not not feeling the need to even say thank you for something that somebody else put hours in, is just being rude, to be honest. With you. Because um, that is what is going to make me remove the download link for this sooner or later, or that, that is pretty much what is going to keep editors from uploading that stuff. So if you want us, the editors, to continue giving out stuff for free to you guys, then you should better be thankful, like and comment on the video, and uh, maybe even share it. I would also like to say thank you to everybody who uploaded the promo video. You will be getting the color correction seven days after you've uploaded the promo. Um, I'm just doing this so that nobody really uploads the promo and then ask me for a CC. So yeah, now let's head over to the um, After Effects, to After Effects. I've got a clip loaded in here, and now I will show you how to apply the actual plugin. Now, first of all, if you um, download the plugin, you will get a zip file in it with a readme file and a, the, the plugin itself, which is an FFX file. Just to everybody that is using Sony Vegas, it's not going to work with it. Why? Because FFX files are just meant to be opened in After Effects. They are After Effects presets files. Why I'm not doing a version for Sony Vegas, or why doesn't that work for Sony Vegas? Simply because Sony Vegas is dumb. Sony Vegas doesn't even support code implementation such as Java or any other language and it's basically useless if you want to do automated things in it. So just forget about that. So yeah, as you can see here I've got the clip imported. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to apply animation effect, um, animation preset under the animation tab. I'm going to check where my um, plugin is. It's in here. That is the folder that you download when you want to upload the promo, and this is the one that you download when you want to download the plugin. So just click on apply, open, and now we've opened that up. Some people might get an error message when opening this up, saying something that the slider can't be found or something similar in a different language. I will show you guys how to fix that if you get that error. So first of all, as you can see here, there's a couple of different options that we have here. We have um, for the Twix effect, we have the 59.94 FPS smoothness and the 29.97 FPS smoothness and the recommended amount of RSMB which will be automatically calculated. So as you've probably seen in the promo, my, what my add-on kind of does is um, it actually removes the frames that don't have to be um, interpolated. 
um, you just have to up, up, uh, output uh, 30 FPS for YouTube. So my script automatically removes frames that are kind of unnecessary. Not the frames from the original clip, but frames that are being interpolated, but don't really need to be in there. These are basically the ones that are causing the main warp. And that is why this program actually works wonders, this plugin. So as you can see here, we have the Twixter. Now, just uh, for your information, um, you just if I was you I would just keep those settings in here because those are the, these are the ones that I actually use they give me very good twix actually and to sync it you actually can't use the frame tab in here you'll just have to stick with the speed because that is what the um, plugin is dependent on it's parented to that speed so yeah what you want to do is you want to go down here and uh, just sync your clip as usually as you would do usually Let's say we go from this to that, just showing you something very basic. And then we go to around 30. So as you can see here, in the first step here, it's moving very, very, like in, in a normal way. As you can see here, we have no distortion, although I'm going below 100, which normally causes it to automatically do uh, distortion. And this was just some errors like uh, if that, that has nothing to do with the clip, it's just uh, something weird with my After Effects. Um, but yeah, as soon as we go below 90, or yeah, like um, below um, 63, it starts interpolating the frames. That means it starts causing distortion. As you can see over here, this is just a tiny bit of distortion. And when there's motion in the picture, like when there's uh, frames uh, behind each other, you're not even going to see this. You really won't, especially if you put on some R, some R, some B. So yeah, now how do we actually control this? As you can see here, we have the speed set to 57. We want to remove all of the frames that we don't need for the output on YouTube. That means that we can remove half of the frames since all we need to output is 30 FPS and we have a clip that is 60 FPS. So if we take the, sp if we take the speed to 57, it means that we are actually um, just bring out 75% of what we could bring out in total as the frames and the rest is just going to be interpolated. To change that, um, I have created this 59.94 uh, FPS smoothness slider. What this basically does is actually allows you to set um, the speed, like it, it kind of allows you to um, control how to, uh, like at what kind of percentage it should start warping frames. As you can see here right now, we are on the same frame and it's not warpy. Like there's no distortion if we are over 50. So that means that this slider is the lower level for your um, for your speed. So if let's say if you're going to do a wrap edit, I would set this to 50 because wrap edits don't need to be 100% smooth. But if you're going for a DNB edit, I would set it to at least 65, if not even 74 or well, 75 because that is, uh, is going to make your picture look very smooth. Now, the reason why I'm making this dependent on rap edits, for example, is because on rap edits, you, lose, you use a lot of R's and B. And the more R's and B you use, the more the um, image will actually be uh, compensated, the missing frames, because it'll look like it'll create new frames with the R's and B. That is something different that I'm not going to cover in this tutorial, but um, yeah, as you can see down here, it is like the recommended amount of R's and B's are automatically calculated. Um, this was just very easy to do. It was just like basically uh, parenting it to this function here and then setting it to uh, like setting it at, at one minus uh, this amount, uh, 100 minus this amount here and then dividing it. So yeah, this is basically just um, dependent on this function here, but it can really help you because um, for example, if we set it to 75, which we would normally, if we set this here to 75, which we would use for DNB, it automatically sets it to 0 0.25, which is, which is kind of like the perfect value for DNB um, edits, just from a personal experience. And if you set it to 0 0.5, if you set it to 50, it'll be at 0 0.5, which is kind of very good for rap edits. Maybe a, bit, a little bit lower, maybe like 0 0.34, 0 0.35, or 0 0.4. But um, anyway, this is just like kind of a suggestion. You don't really have to pay attention to it. And yeah, now you see that we have two different sliders here, 59.94 FPS smoothness and the 29.97 FPS smoothness. Basically, you don't have to uh, use this uh, lower one if you're 
if your clip is 59.94 FPS. So anyway, um, if you are going to change this value up here, you have to type it with a commata and not a dot because a dot will actually just uh, drag it to a thousand. So if we go over here, for example, and if we change that from 59.94 to go the other way around, um, for example, over somewhere where we can actually see it, like where he's pulling out the gun, for example. Yeah, for example here, if we set that to 29.97, you can see the difference. You don't have that many frames anymore, and it's just going to be warpy. Now, I don't recommend editing 29.97 clips anyway, but if you have to edit them, you can still use that plugin. I would recommend um, setting this uh, 29.97 FPS layer to about 80, because um, you will really have to use a lot of... Um, you will have to use a lot of uh, distortion. You're not going get, to get around it because um, the clips just don't have enough frames per second, which is really gay in my opinion, but that's just how it is. So if, if I set this to um, 80, for example, I'm just going to delete that keyframe over here just to show you the effect. If I set that, that set, set that here to 80, and if I go, um, if I set this here higher, then it'll automatically do, it'll automatically, if I set this here, yeah, to for example that, it will automatically uh, distort images, start distorting them. As you can see here, that these frames are created because this uh, slider is set to 85 <laughs> and uh, the, the speed is set to 80. So it will automatically adapt to your Twixer settings, which is um, really useful, I think. So it doesn't matter what if you're going to change this slider here at all. Um, it, it is not being used anymore. My, I, I've coded it so it automatically uses the value that you have over here, or at least it, it checks whether the clips is are uh, over 30 FPS or under 30 FPS. So yeah, as I've already said, the uh, recommended amount of RSMB is automatically calculated. And yeah, that's just about it, I think. Um, now I'm getting over to the part where I'm going to explain to you what might happen um, if you are not installing it correctly, if you're not using the plugin correctly. So first of all, you want to go to your After Effects application. Now I need to close this here first. I'm not going to change, save this. Now, um, if I go to Plugins, you can see I have all the different plugins in here, but that's not really what we want to want to go to. We want to go to the um, After Effects folder itself. On Windows, you will find the files that I'm about to change under AMT Languages. In Mac, on Mac, you have to click this, right-click this here, go to Show Package Contents, then you have the contents over here. Then you will just check uh, which one there is. <laughs> The, the shitload of folders. I don't even know it myself, I just found it by by accident recently. Yeah, under the resources uh, folder. So in here you have the AMT languages folder, which is basically um, setting the languages um, in your After Effects. So you are very likely to get an error in case you have a file in here that is, for example, Czech or Russian or German or a different language than English, US, and if you have a language in here, for example, like uh, uh, I don't know, like j just a different language, like this one here, for example, what you want to do um, with it is um, you want to change the name first of all. You want to change that to en underscore us. You just have to write it exactly as shown over here. Then you're going to open it using text edit uh, editor, whatever you want to want to use, and whatever is standing in here. She has to be replaced by en underscore us as well. So I'll just re replace that and save it as en underscore us. And what will, that will do is uh, it will automatically load your After Effects uh, with the English language files. And since the slider function sometimes doesn't work, if you're using a German After Effects version, for example, um, you should just um, change uh, to your your language, uh, which I would recommend doing anyway. <laughs> and um, then just try applying the preset and uh, it's gonna work, trust me. Um, 
There's something else that uh, somebody had a problem with. He tried applying the preset and he told me that he had, that he had tweaked it. But since my um, plugin is actually using the uh, normal Twixer as the resource, the Twixer Pro won't work for this. So if you only have Twixer Pro and you don't have the normal Twixer, then it's not going to work. You just have to install Twixer. You can get it either cracked on the internet somewhere, or you can buy it um, at Red, uh, I think it's revisionplugins.com uh, or revisioneffects.com. Um, so yeah, that's been it, guys. It's been Quite a long tutorial, uh, I gotta agree on that. Um, just a quick secret that I'm giving out right here uh, about my pre Twix uh, settings. Just gonna give you a few settings that you can use. Just gonna use the regular Twixter for now. Just to write some down. The, the settings I'm always going for is, these here are my Twixter presets by the way. They're my editing pack that I'm selling. And um, yeah, a few values that I always use is like, I'm going from 100, few frames later, down to around 90, because I don't want the first part of the shot to be slowed down that much. I'm kind of like going over to 60, which is a common value I use, going down to about 40, and that's about it. Don't go lower than 40 when doing track shots, it'll just make it ugly. Or um, one thing that you can do is you can actually go down to maybe 20 when using DNB for example, but apart from that I wouldn't really recommend doing it. These people out there I'm not gonna mention as uh, anybody, but um, uh, let's just put it as uh, some guy in Psycho. He always use, uh, he always is kind of like putting his twigs to 100, and the next frame he goes like, boom, one, ha, twigs is done, perfect. And I really think that's not the way twigs is supposed to be used. <laughs> so yeah, uh, always uh, change the the values that you're using I would go from a hundred like after the shot I would go from a hundred to about 90 then to 60 and 40 these are some quite good values like values that uh, I personally recommend using if you're doing feeds um, there's pretty much one rule that I always keep in mind uh, never go over 250 because otherwise it'll just look like it's um, I don't know <laughs> running through time too fast, uh, just r looks kind of ridiculous. And uh, never go below 25. Oh, below 25 because um, when you're going l lower than 25, um, it starts warping a lot and uh, it just doesn't look good. Another thing is that uh, if I was you, I wouldn't uh, twist to the last part of your shot. I mean, like when he's actually shooting the the person when he's coming closer with the scope, I would slow-mo the part where he has the scope on the side and is starting to zoom in. And I'm, I would make it go faster with the time so that when he's uh, shooting the person, he actually zoomed in a bit. Um, he, the last part of him zooming in is actually a bit faster than the, the part of him, like, you know, of his weapon coming a bit closer. Just giving you those uh, tips. Those are just my personal... Uh, yeah, I could I could say I think experiences that I made with Twixer. Really think it's kind of strange that people still sometimes do like Twixer from a hundred to to one. Uh, personally, think it looks ugly. Well, it does look good in some uh, hardcore edits and rock edits, but most of the time it just looks gay, especially when editing trick shots. So yeah, that's really been it, guys. Um, <coughs> voice crack. <coughs> Thanks for watching and. Um, Maybe check out the promo and leave a comment and like as well as on this tutorial. Thanks.